Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank. Today, we're doing a Mark 85 update. Let's take a look. This is gonna be a very condensed video. Originally, I had filmed a lot of befores of painting and repainting my entire suit, but I know you guys really aren't too uh, concerned with the before, so I'm gonna talk about the after. There's gonna be a lot of information in this video, and some stuff I'm gonna refer you to other videos to, and there will be more to come, so just stay tuned. Please give the whole video a watch. I'm sure I'm gonna answer some of your questions about painting, the new strapping system, and uh, how I was able to take this helmet from looking not so great to looking uh, world better. Before we dive into that, I wanna take a quick minute to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen current passions, or just get lost in creativity. It's curated just for learning, which means there's no ads and they're constantly launching new classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. A content creator named Talise actually has a whole introductory series on creating and telling a story in a minute or under to help you with your Instagram videos, and I don't see why these can't translate over to something like TikTok. So I started exploring this class to hopefully help me make better content for Instagram and TikTok utilizing the stuff that I'm already making. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on thousands of topics like logo design, graphic design, branding, editing, and more. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below will get a free trial of premium membership. Now, some of you guys might not even really notice a difference or care that I repainted the suit, but I've improved a lot of techniques here that I think are going to help you guys in your uh, project. Now, this whole repaint stemmed from one accident, me shipping the suit. A lot of you know if you've been checking Instagram or following the live streams, but the shin over here snapped during shipping, and it's kind of forced my hand. A few other things broke, parts of the chest, um, tons of scratches and nicks. It was due for a repaint, especially after getting the Mark 85 Hot Toys. I knew this thing needed an update. So hopefully in about 10 or 15 minutes or under, I'm gonna explain how I went from the old paint style to the new paint style and the whole process is in all the materials I used. Now you can see that my old suit took a lot of damage from rubbing, wear and tear. The cod piece probably suffered the most. It also broke too. So I've gone and reinforced it with some um, new plastic. I melted rafts in there. I've redone the entire strapping system. That's probably gonna be a whole other dedicated video that you guys are gonna need to wait for because I am in con crunch mode. I'm about to go to Silicon in San Jose with Emily the Engineer, CTK Danny, Kiara. Like we're, we're going with all our suits and we are all stressing. Now, don't get me wrong, the old red was pretty good. It looked great in photos, but in person, I just, it, it lost a lot of its metallic sheen, especially when I clear coated it. These were the colors that were available to me in England. But now that I'm back in America, I have a lot more options. Now, obviously I went and welded and repaired everything. I did a much better job welding at this time. That's why it broke the original welds. This is one of the first pieces I built. It snapped and I paid for it, but everything's fixed. And I stripped all of the straps, all of the electronics out. Then I went through a whole new buckle and strap system because I didn't care about damaging the paint now. I could be as brutal as I wanted with all of this, scratch it up, nick it up, it didn't matter. I, the whole strapping system is revised and it's much more secure. But again, for another video. Luckily, the hard part was already done. I've already gone and sanded all of it down nice and smooth and got rid of most of the layer lines. This cod piece isn't too good, but any, no one's looking at my butt anyway, I hope. And all I needed to do was get the clear coat and wax off. Yes, I said wax. I've actually waxed this suit after the clear coat is on to give it more of a buff and shine. I just needed to sand the clear coat off and that's what I did. I have a variety of sandpapers. I only use like three of them. I used a mixture of 180 and 80 grit to sand down the, the clear coat. And once I saw the paint starting to come up, once I was scuffing it up and I was actually moving red paint and gold paint, I was good. I didn't need to sand it all off. That's fine. From there, I kind of just touched it up with like 320 grit and then I went to priming. Now, this is very weird. I didn't reprime the entire suit. I hit it with old base coat. Now let's talk about paints because this is always a point of contention and everybody wants to, you know, the perfect answer. What are the perfect Iron Man colors? There aren't any, unless you get the paint codes from the movie, but only a few of the uh, first suits were actually built practically and the rest are mostly CGI. So depends on your flavor and what scene you're looking at. The Mark 85 changes colors like nine times in the movies. It's fine. Now these are some of the primers I use. This is my favorite primer if we were going from that. Unfortunately, I can, this is literally the only can I've been able to find in America so far. But this two-in-one filler primer, it's a little thicker, but it sands pretty good. And then filler primer gunks up your sandpaper like you wouldn't believe and can cause cracks. I only used a little bit of primer to repair the back because that broke too, and I'm gonna use it to start repairing the crack in the shin. I did the entire suit in a gold base coat. 
And this metallic gold, if you've seen it in my other videos, covers anything. No primers, chrome bases, or black gloss black bases. This stuff just covers. But I've always been afraid to use it because it couldn't take a clear coat. It looks great, but the second you hit most metallics with clear coats, they fade and lose a lot of their metallic sheen. But this Duplicolor 1K clear coat, oh boy. Now, it did lose some of its metallic sheen. This actually retain a lot of the gold features even though this can recommends don't use a top coat if you test things sometimes you'll get lucky and i got real lucky here now let's look at something like the abs sprayed the entire abs gold then i went and taped off and covered the spots i wanted to leave gold so i put tape over all of these gold spots and then went back and did the gunmetal. Now this is a Krylon Fusion um, metallic dark metal. It's, it's gunmetal, they just didn't use the word. This again covers anything, but you have to be careful mixing brands. You need to do testing. This worked fine. Once the gunmetal was done, I went back, covered up all the gunmetal, and then I redid the gold because now I, I wasn't worried about overspray. This allows you to just spray the gunmetal on. I didn't need to cover up all of the red. I didn't need to worry about it bleeding onto the gold. It, the gold was already covered sprayed all the gunmetal, called it a day, then I um, covered up the gunmetal, sanded around the edges again just to get it um, a little bit of better adhesion, did everything gold again, and then did everything red. This way, the red was never subjected to tape. If you've been painting metallics, you'll know that sometimes uh, tape leaves residue on um, you know, golds and reds and it can peel the paint off. And if you're using the wrong base coat, this is what can happen when you peel the tape up. This Mark, 80, this Mark 50 helmet is, uh, has seen better days. Don't worry about this guy. But that's exactly what happens if the red or the top coat of the metallic doesn't adhere well to the chrome underneath it. So that's why I was using gold. You can get pretty uh, lucky with blue painter's tape. Even standard frog tape's pretty good. But frog tape makes a delicate surface tape that's even a, a much lower tack. This stuff is so good. I, I've done most of the suit with one roll. I just had a crack into the second roll that uh, is gonna have to be for the leg, so you know, whatever. But yeah, this stuff, worth every penny and it, it, it won the West for me. So get yourself some good tape. As for filling the damage on the cracks, some standard cheap wood filler, get it off Amazon and sand it down, prime, sand, prime until you're happy with it. Now, I did a lot of testing on the reds. These Duplicolor metal casts, these are the same. I think just one's an older can and th this is the new style can. I was gonna do the perfect match originally and that's what that Ma Iron Mando helmet is up there. That's the um, perfect match. One of these is also perfect match. And these are old, the old cod pieces that I don't care about. I did so much testing. There's so much going on here, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, there's um, a silver base coat here, a chrome base coat here, a gold base coat here, a gunmetal base coat here, or vice versa. This is one clear coat, this is another, this is another. It, this is all, I did so much testing here. Then I put tape on it and peeled it off to see if it was gonna come off. Now this was the standard chrome, the same chrome that's on that helmet. This came off a little bit. Nothing came off the butt plate because that was the 1K clear coat. So I went through the trials and tribulations of testing. And then here, you can see that uh, these are the colors I ultimately landed on. This is the old back plate. I printed a new one over there. And these are the colors that I eventually went with. So it's all about orders of operation and just what you want to do and how you want to do it. Ideally, I'd love to do, uh, you know, you want to do the big colors last. Unfortunately, on the thighs, that's not going to be possible. I'm going to need to tape off all of this gold to do the red because I know for a fact this red doesn't like getting taped off. The other thing to take into consideration is the anodized red the metal cast it lightens up a little bit when you hit it with a clear coat it stays pretty dark when it's you know a fresh paint but as you clear coat it it might lighten up a little bit i've also gone and added new details to the suit i've added all these gunmetal lines along the abs i've cut in some new details over here i've detailed the neck more to make it a little better mimic the hot toys and actually done the shoulders with a little bit more gunmetal i added some gunmetal lines to the back all up there the last two things i want to talk about are the infinity stones now these are the original stones that were on my suit they've faded i don't know why but the resin dye has faded in the stones this used to be yellow this used to be orange this used to be purple and i don't even want to talk about the red i don't even know where it is so i've gone and resin cast new stones i still have the original molds for my infinity gauntlet and i went and used this epoxy resin from that i had saved from england but it came out squishy look it's like flexible and i don't know why they still look good 
it's still a very nice red and they're going to get the job done but i went to uh, the craft store and got a new resin epoxy and i just recast all the stones again these are my scaled down stones for my gauntlet and i mixed extra just to make new stones and a new arc reactor hopefully they're dry um, by the time i need to put them back in the gauntlet next up is my old arc reactor now this was the original arc reactor that was in the chest it was just a little detailed piece um, this is the punished props mark 85 or mark 50 arc reactor and it comes in two pieces and you put el wire and panel in there and it lights up all pretty i just printed out the little detail part and glued it into the chest threw some leds behind it and that's what i used but i wanted the arc reactor to be a little bit extra this time so i still am using the punished props one but i modified it to fit in the chest much better now i'm still obviously obviously that resin cast uh, reactor cover is going to go there but what i like most about this one is i can reach in here and take the entire arc reactor out. And this was resin printed on my Epax E10. Uh, thank you again, Epax. <laughs> yeah, so this is all one piece and I cut out the inside in mesh mixer. I just made a bunch of cuts, refused everything. So now it's hollow, put a clear raft on the back with a little triangle, you can see it right there. And that's my NeoPixel board, that's for another video. Yeah, it actually slides right in there, will sit there and light will come through it, but I can pop it out if I want. I think that's kind of cool. It was done just by stacking up a bunch of rafts and foam and making a little cradle for it. It's not the cleanest. I put a little foam in the back of it just so it doesn't hurt my chest, but it actually doesn't even touch my chest. Um, but that's it, and I think it's going to look awesome. It looks great when it's lit up, but again, you have to be patient. Oh yeah, one last thing. I redid the hands. Now, I don't have time to print and test out all new fingers and hands, so I, was, I had to uh, just sand and update my current palms but this time i've done gone and done the gunmetal properly i didn't have this gunmetal detail in the palms originally and i'm really happy i did and the shine on these fingers came out beautiful so it's going to look real good these are the free mark um mark six thingy verse fingers from uh to dave the same with the hand file which i still love i just rounded out a lot of the details with my dremel so that's about it but that does it for this video guys i know that was like so much talking so much information but i'm in con crunch mode like i said so there will be more in-depth videos coming out specifically about the new paint taping masking clear coating buffing polishing that is coming out same goes for the new buckle and strap and harness system i've completely revised it it's similar to how it used to be but it's much more secure much more comfortable and again there'll be a video on that but for the meantime i do have another strapping and buffle system uh video you guys can take a look at star boost will be in work once this is done this is like my ultimate finish for the Mark 85, and I don't think there's going to be much left to do after this. Please let me know specifics of what you guys want to know more about. This way I can plan future videos, and uh, thank you for being so patient. I, the upload's been a little bit crazy lately because, again, we just moved, got all our furniture, trying to finish the suit, a bunch of other stuff's going on, and I have work, so yeah, that's fun too. And make sure you guys stay tuned to the Making the Makerspace um, series that's currently in work. Uh, you'll see more about the garage, the printers upstairs, the paint booth, the new studio, which is coming out beautiful, and I can't wait to show you guys that, so stay tuned. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you stay up to date on all of these the random update videos and the Iron Man suit builds and the tutorials. I don't want you guys missing any of that. And last but not least, a huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you for staying so patient with me and thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, there's links to all that stuff I've talked about down below. So please, guys, go check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being patient. And as always, have a good day. Dang, this looks good on camera.